new series in uh, fluid mechanics so today i wanted to just brush up on my advanced level knowledge in hydrostatics so the major problem when it comes to open university students is uh, they struggle in the fundamentals so i just wanted to uh, do a revision type thing in the a level physics uh, hydrostatics and then in the later sessions we will move on to the introduction to hydraulics and hydrodynamics which comes into the university syllabus and further more to the fluid mechanics uh, which we do in uh, level 5 of our university in open uh, right uh, let's move on uh, when it comes to hydrostatics uh, as per the name we only deal with static fluids so that the fluid doesn't move here doesn't move here so we know what is fluid fluid is uh, anything that can flow so here uh, there are two types of fluid where we deal one is the air and another one are the liquids so the major parameters we deal here are the density so we know what is density density is the mass per unit weight so either we denote it in kilograms per meter cube or grams per centimeter cube and the next parameter we deal is the relative density or sometimes it is said as specific gravity so this is a relative parameter where a density of a substance is compared with the density of water. So the, there, there won't be any units. So we, <coughs> let's say uh, when you take the density of uh, coconut oil, it's roughly uh, around 800. Around 800 kilograms per meter cube. And when you take the density of water, it is around 1000 kilograms per meter cube. So the relative density would be 800 by 1000, which is 0 0.8. So the next major thing we uh, deal in hydrostatic is the pressure. So we all know what is pressure. Pressure is force by area. So simply pressure is equal to force by area so the unit would be uh, newton per meter squared or this is equivalent to pascal right um, uh, generally force uh, doesn't have a particular direction when we take a point uh, in air the pressure acts in every direction if it is open to atmosphere, it acts in every direction. So pressure uh, doesn't have a particular direction, it's a scalar quantity. And uh, when resolving some certain uh, objects, the, there can be a resultant pressure. We will see that in, uh, in the coming moment. Uh, and when we take uh, some properties of pressure, let's take a container filled with water to a certain level. If this container is at rest, the pressure at a level, let's say this level, these are equal at every point. So that is another property of uh, the pressure. And uh, we can find this pressure uh, simply by uh, now let's say the weight of this water is mg so the reaction would be r so there would be a weight of this water let's say it is as mg and there would be a reaction to the water from the container as r there would be the same r on the container by the water let's say this area of this uh, contain as A and height of this water as H. So what would be the weight? We can simply calculate. Let's take the density as rho. So the volume would be A into H. So the mass would be A H into rho. 
So mg would be equal to a h rho g. So we know pressure is equal to force over area. In this case, the force on the base is R, this reaction. So according to Newton's third law, this reaction would act on the liquid from the base of the container and at the same time there would be a downward force on the container by the liquid. So R by A, so this R would be equal to Ng equilibrium of forces. So Ng is equal to A H O G. So Ng by so Ng by A. So Ng is equal to A H O G by A. So pressure would be equal to H O G. So this is a simple proof for saying that pressure uh, on this point is equal to H rho G the height into density of the liquid into uh, this gravitational acceleration. So, so this pressure can be measured using uh, a YouTube manometer. So, when you take a YouTube manometer, so let's say there's a, a gap, some pipe where you need to measure the pressure and it is connected to a YouTube manometer. So here is the supply, some gas. So here let's say we have water. Due to this high pressure, this will be pushed down and this water column will be a bit higher. And we know at the same level when the liquid is at rest, the pressures are equal. It's a simple principle. So here it is open to atmosphere, it is let's say the atmospheric pressure has 5, so this is PATM atmospheric pressure. So what would be the pressure at this point? So let's say this height as A. So the pressure at point A, let's say this is A, so PA would be equal to atmospheric pressure plus H rho G if the density of this liquid is rho. So at this point B, there would be the same pressure. So the pressure supplied by this gas flow at this point B is equal to pi plus H rho G. We can simply measure this, right? Uh, so there are two components involved in, in this pressure. That is the uh, absolute pressure and the gauge pressure. Absolute pressure is the actual pressure acting at this point A, so which is pi plus A rho G. So this is the absolute pressure, that is the two true pressure. So there's another part which is known as gauge pressure. Gauge pressure uh, is the pressure acting in this point if the atmospheric pressure is zero. So that is the reading from the manometer only. So this part. This is the gauge pressure part, so which is given by the manometer only. So you can just for remembering purpose, if you find the absolute pressure and ignore the uh, gauge, ignore the atmospheric pressure part, you can find the gauge pressure. On if it is a simple manometer, thing. right? So we have seen how to find the pressure in a container if it is in rest. So let's say um, we are having a container that is moving on a lift. So still the liquid is at rest. The entire container is moving upward or downward or whatever it is. With there will be a slight variation in the pressure. So let's say there is a container with liquid of height h, base area a, we know if this is at rest, the pressure at this bottom would be h rho g. But in this case, this is moving upward in a lift, let's say in a lift at an acceleration of a. So what would be the pressure at this bottom part? So we know there would be weight and there would be a reaction r. So according to Newton's second law, we can apply F equal MA. So here R minus MG would be equal to MA. I am applying this to the fluid. So this R. 
R would be equal to M into A plus G. Right? We already know pressure can be written as R by A. So that is equal to M into A plus G by A. Right? So again, M can be converted into volume time uh, density into <coughs> So volume is equal to A into H, so A H rho A plus G, so here by A, so here this is equal to H rho A plus G. So you can see there is a variation in the gravitational acceleration, the resultant gravitational acceleration varies. So the resultant answer is also varying. So you can simply prove this for other side also, let's say if this lift is moving downward by an acceleration a so just the uh, sign convention of this a changes that is the direction change so instead of a you can substitute minus a so p would be equal to h rho into g minus a so you can prove this in the similar manner so you'll get this answer so if it is in free fall so this a would be equal to g in free fall this is downward in A, so if it is free fall, so we are falling at acceleration of G. So here the acceleration is G. So if you substitute G for this A, the pressure would be zero. At the bottom, there would be no pressure. So similarly, you will feel weightlessness. If you are a person who is standing on the lift and you are moving upward, you will feel, you will feel a high pressure. You will be, uh, feel that you are uh, experiencing more weight. So everyone who have traveled in lift or when you are traveling again in lift, just uh, think about it. When you are moving upward, you will feel that your weight has increased. That is the reason where you have weight reaction has increased due to the effective uh, acceleration on your body. So when the reaction increases, the pressure also increases. When the reaction decreases, when you are moving downward, there will be this reaction and the pressure decreases. If the lift is falling down at gravitational acceleration in free fall, you will experience weightlessness. So you will, you will start to float. So at that time, the pressure would be zero. Right? That, that is the next concept. Right? So this is a simple uh, basic concepts which we need in our advanced level. So the next thing is when you have different liquids. So two layers or more than two layers. That's also same. So let's say we are having a container, large container with water as the bottom layer and coconut oil. Let's say there's a oil layer. This is H1. So this is H2. This is rho 1, this is rho 2 and an atmospheric pressure of pi. So let's take this point as A and this point as B. So pressure at A would be equal to pi plus H1 rho 1 G and pressure at B would be equal to pi plus H1 rho 1 G plus H2 rho 2 G. Simple as that. Right? So whatever the orientation, the important thing is the vertical line. So we'll see an example for that also. So let's take a test tube. Let's take a test tube. And the test tube is in this manner. And it is filled with liquid. So I am taking the length of liquid as L. The vertical height is H. And uh, I'll take this angle as T. So we can write it as sine theta is equal to h by l, right? And we can find uh, the weight also. So you, we know there would be a weight component mg. So here there would be a component. You can resolve that. So here this is theta. If this is theta, this angle would be 90 minus theta. So this is also 90 minus theta. So mg cos 90 minus theta, this would be mg sine theta right 
So the weight would be mg sin theta. I'll take this cross section as A. So we know pressure is equal to reaction by area. So that is equal to reaction can be written as that would be equal to that the reaction from the base would be equal to mg sin theta over A. So reaction from the test tube to the liquid that would be in this direction. So that is equal to mg sin theta from equilibrium of forces. So mg can be written as A L rho g sin theta so this is a l is equal to the volume into density is mass into g this g and the sin theta part over a here from l sin theta l sin theta is equal to h so a and a cancels out l sin theta is equal to h rho g. so the pressure is equal to h rho g so either orientation whatever the orientation the necessary part is the vertical height. So from the vertical height, we can find the uh, pressure acting on bottom of a certain container or test tube for whatever the point we need. So the next thing is we will take some different shape container. So let's say a regular container. Here the pressure which is filled with water up to this level, the pressure would be acting in every point along this container in the bottom. So in this direction, in every direction around all the wall. So if you consider this part, let's say the height is H. If you consider only this wall, so the resultant would be at the middle. At, at H by 2, the final resultant force will be acting here. Here also there will be a final resultant wall and the bottom also. When you consider the whole container, the surface forces will cancel out. Right? And uh, there will be a resultant downward force. Right? Uh, when we take a slant shaped container, there is a variation in the shape, something like this, and filled with liquid up to this level. So the pressure will be acting in this manner. So here we can find two components one, the horizontal components, other one is the vertical component in this direction. Right, which is acting on the container, right? And there will be pressure C also. So here, these horizontal components, if you look carefully, these horizontal components cancel out each other. But the vertical components add up to the liquid, sorry, to the container. So each vertical component add up and there would be an additional pressure on the container. If you turn around this container in the other manner, if you turn around this as a container similar to this in this shape, something like this, here the pressure would be in this manner, and here also. The horizontal components cancel out and the vertical components adapt and form a resultant pressure. Right. So I think uh, you'd have gotten basic idea on pressure and how does the pressure act. So in the following video, we'll see about some uh, YouTube experiments. See you soon.